Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Mr. Cups, and welcome back to Oxford United challenging for the Premier League title. So for the last couple of episodes, we've been getting some pretty decent results. Our form has finally changed. You know, we've been getting like two wins in a draw, which isn't too shabby. We've died all the way up the league table. We're currently in fifth and we're in the transfer period. And I've got some good news. We finally made some new signings. Welcome Luke Shaw and Angel Carrera. We finally got two new players. Luke Shaw is rated 71. Uh, Carrera is rated 74. Uh, they're both really young. They've got really high potential. And they got a good future ahead of them. We're still trying to get one more player. He'll probably be in quite soon. But it's time for the first game of the day. Oxford United at home to Barnsley. And this is going to be pretty difficult because, well, I think Barnsley currently right now are a championship team. So they're an next championship team. And they're actually first in the table. And in real life, they signed the beast himself, Emmanuel Fring Pong. This is how it went. So this game, frustrating, absolutely frustrating. It was like watching Arsenal play Bayern Munich. I was on the defensive a fuck ton. Didn't have a red card though, but um, you could tell why Barnsley were top of the table. They were just, even though I had two new players in the team, two decent players, you know, Carrera and Luke Shaw were making, um, they did make an effect, they did. Luke, uh, Carrera's pace in midfield was so, so good. Luke Shaw, you know, he tidied a lot up at the back. He's got really good defensive stats and he's got a nice bit of pace about him. He's like high 80s in terms of pace, but he can get up to 90, which is beautiful for a left back. Basically, he's going to be a future Ashley Cole. But my strike force in this game just could not strike. We just could not strike. And the first half was dead. This game is all to play for in the second half. So things didn't get better for me in the second half. It was literally a carbon copy of the first half. But Barnsley did take the lead. I absolutely get done in midfield. I get turned. Barnsley plays the ball out to the wing, they whip in a cheeky cross, Dawson gets his head on it, it's 1-0. And I actually think that might have been Luke Shaw's at fault right there, he wasn't marking his man, but what are you going to do? After that goal winning though, I did have some opportunities. On the 73rd minute, Ruffles actually had a thundering shot which hit the bar. So surprised that didn't go in the back end there. I started piling on the attacks, I was like, you know what, we got to try and get a draw out of this game. But I was just outplayed. You know, this game has ended 1-0 to Barnsley. <laughs> I love how we finally get some new signings and, and we lose our first game with them But that was just a terribly difficult match Even though we had two new signings We were outclassed in a lot of other positions But we were unlucky to not come out with a draw there uh, Barnsley did play a good game though So all credit to him We've actually had our first loss in quite a while now Hopefully this isn't going to be a recurrence So after that game there was no new signings I think it changed around the team for a little bit for the second game of the day In the second game of the day Oxford United away to Stevenage in the Johnston Payne Trophy And this is how it went But at the moment with our new signings, I'm just going to say we probably are the better team at the moment. We should hopefully do well in this game. And we got off to an amazing start. In the ninth minute, this is honestly something out of nothing. Potter's running down the wing. He's doing well, but he ends up getting tackled. Defender plays the ball back to the keeper. The keeper starts running out. I don't know why. Potter uses his pace, catches up to him, tackles him. Striker Danny Rose puts the finish away. It's 1-0. It was nice to score early. I always love scoring early. This game was very open and I was honestly really enjoying this game. It was full of action, but Stevenage did actually equalize. 27th minute, there's some piss poor defending from me. I don't know how I didn't clear this ball. Somehow it falls, I think, to one of their midfielders actually. He walks past two of my players, I don't even there. Flumps in the back of the net. It's one all. So after that goal went out for fuck, you know, Steven is playing a pretty tight game, you know, this might be pretty even from now on out. But we did actually get a second goal, and this is all thanks to a new signee. On the 34th minute, the ball's played out to Carrera. He uses his sweet pace, he just runs down the line, just keeps on running, you know, there's nothing going on, there's nothing going on. He gets up to the line, absolutely just destroys a player with a dribble, cuts inside, Finesses it home in the back of the net. That was such a beautiful solo goal. He picked that ball up from basically the halfway line. Ran it in. Put it in the back of the net. That's what we paid 9 million for. Goals like that is 2-1. So just before the end of the first half. We end up winning a corner. Danny Rose plays the cross in. Falls to Mullins. He's an absolute big ass lad. He headers it home in the back of the net. It's 3-1. First half has come and gone. It's all to play for in the second half. <laughs> So just got to say, I think we had a pretty decent first half, 3-1, four goals, pretty decent game so far. I think we've got a commanding lead at the moment. And what's better than a 3-1 lead? A 4-1 lead. The 60th minute, there's some beautiful play from us. We pick the ball up, falls to Constable, Constable plays it to Rose, uh, I think striker Danny Rose. He plays it to part, takes a cheeky shot, keeper saves it while he just palms it away. Ruffles runs in for the rebound, puts it in the back of net. I was honestly surprised he didn't actually miss that because that was a really tight angle. But it's 4-1. All credit to Stevenish though, they didn't give up. And it was honestly near enough an immediate reply. 
on the 65th minute, they run in on goal. I swipe one of their players out like he wasn't even there. Didn't even try to attempt to play for the ball. Horrible tackle from me. They win a penalty. And they put it in the back of the net. It's 4 2. So I thought, you know what? There's still more goals in this game. Made a few subs because some of my players were tired. I didn't want to, you know, risk an injury with some of my new players now. So I took some players off. Put on Tyrone. And I just got to say, this fifth goal is pretty fucking sexy. So in around about the 80th minute, Constable picks up the ball. He plays in a decent cross to Tyrone. Tyrone just runs in the box. And I thought, you know what, he's going to take a touch. Missed this opportunity. The keeper's going to save it. But he hit this volley first time. Flies over the keeper in the back of the net. That honestly reminded me of Sedan's goal in the Champions League final. And honestly, for someone like Tyrone, who isn't that good of a player, to put that in the back of the net, that was fucking something special. It's 5-2. Yet again, though, all credit to Stevenage. They didn't give up. 85th minute. They win a corner. Falls to Ashton. This is amazing header. I still say headers are OP because this guy is fucking miles out when he headers his ball in the back in there. Keeper just absolutely just beaten. You know, he's just been raped here. Beautiful goal from them. It's 5-3. I'm sad to say though, that's the end of the eight goal wonder. The game ended there. We've had eight goals in a single game. We scored five beautiful goals, but it was quite worrying that we conceded three. Even though we got Luke Shaw there at the back. Conceding three was pretty bad. You're two Stevenage as well. Conceding three was pretty bad. But we scored more. You know, at the end of the day, if we score more goals than, our, than the other team, I'm happy. It's time to move on. So after that game, we finally got a new signing in. We've signed Broom, our player I wanted. It was either him or Fisher. He accepted the contract first and thought, fuck it, I'm going to get him. Overall, he's about the same as Fisher, but he's got a lot more pace. And I want him on that left wing. You know, he's going to be replacing Tyrone on that wing. He's got a bright future ahead of him, and he's rated 76. And that's all the signings I'm going to do for now. I said I'm going to sign three players, and they're my three players, Carrera, Luke Shaw, and Bruma. Hopefully they can win us a lot of games. But it's time for the third and final game of the day. Oxford United away to Chesterfield. So this game wasn't like the last game. We didn't score early on. We didn't open up the floodgates straight away. It was pretty difficult. It was raining. Um, if I say, if I try to talk about my new players, Bruma was really decent up front. His pace was very, very welcome. And you could tell when he was on the ball, he just, his ball control compared to Tyrone. I'm gonna compare him to Tyrone because they basically knew he was playing the same position and the same style of player. Everything was so much better, but all credit to Chesterfield though, they stopped a lot of my attacks really early on. And this game honestly reminded me of the Barnsley game because nothing happened in the first half. It's all to play for in the second half. So the second half got off really slow yet again. Both teams were playing really well, we both had opportunities, but there wasn't no clear cut opportunities. We were defending really well and I just don't know, nothing was happening for me. And I thought, you know what, this game might end a boring 0-0 draw. But on the 75th minute, you know I like to get something out of nothing. This honestly, yet again, was something out of nothing. Defender has the ball. Danny Rose closes him down. I don't know what he's doing. He takes a dead touch. Doesn't even try to play to anyone. Danny Rose tackles him. Puts it in the back of the net. Cool finish from him. It's 1-0. I thought, you know what? We might have just stolen the game. But something bad happened. Only a couple of minutes later, on around about the 84th minute, they have the ball. Not much is going on. I'm trying to defend for my life. I don't want to concede a penalty. Ball's played to John O'Shea. He whips a shot in, keeper saves it, but it bounced straight back to him, and he puts it in the back of the net, it's 1-0. So I thought, you know what, this game is going to end a 1-0 draw, and I thought, fuck, this is frustrating. We just signed new players, I wanted to climb up the table, this isn't the type of results I need. But something magical happened. In the 90th minute, last attack of the game, we're just running that goal. Play the ball to Tyrone, he absolutely just flumps his shot, I'm, I'm spamming shoot, he misses it. Somehow he plays a decent pass back to Danny Rose, striker Danny Rose. I don't even think he means to pass this. I think he just miscontrols it. Falls to Danny Rose. He powers it home in the back end there. And that goal right there has just won us the game in the 90th minute. 2-1 victory over Chesterfield. We're still sitting in fifth place, but that was a good win from the lads. That could have been a draw right there. And if we had drawn that game, we'd probably be sitting in around about seventh right now. So it's still tight up there in the table. So this episode... Two wins are lost, not too shabby. I would like to draw, but what you're going to do? We finally got our new signings in, and hopefully the future is going to be bright for Oxford United. But I'm just going to leave the episode off there. I've been Mr. Teacups. If you break, come subscribe. See you next time.